Hello and welcome to another pen video from me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right we have a Twisby Vax 700R in the Iris. We have a second Twisby Vax 700R in the Iris. We have a Pelican M800 or M805 in the Vibrant Blue. We have a Visconti Daedalus, a Visconti Camelot, an Atelia Lusso Andromeda in the Tectonic Seas. We have a London Pen Company, the Christopher 15 in Primary Manipulation 1. We have an Atelier Lusso Andromeda in the King Cobra. We have a Pelican M800 Royal Gold Rarden. And we have a Danny Trio, and this is the Bamboo Story in Akatamanuri. So I think let's take a look at these pens in a little bit more detail. So this is the Twisby Vax 700R. Uh, this is in this sort of flame torch sort of uh, metal trim. And you can see this here that the trim has different colours on it depending on the pen and how you rotate it. So as it goes from almost like a purplish to like a bluey greeny colour there and a yellowy. So this is um, a VAC 700R but in the iris model and then you've got the same on the nib as well and a little bit here on the section uh, as the, the nib goes into here. Now these are uh, vacuum fillers, hence the name VAC 700R. Uh, I do like these a lot. They do have a bit of a step down and, and pronounced threads here, but I do like this pen a lot. Uh, it has a broad Twisby nib, which essentially is a Yovo nib, as I understand it. But those nibs write fairly well. It's a medium nib. The next one here, again, is another Twisby Vac 700R. And you can see this is a little bit less purpley on the trim, uh, a little bit more yellowy, I'd say, on the cap band there. But again, another VAC 700R, uh, this is a nice pen. I have this inked up with a green ink, this one. And if I remove the cap there, you'll see that this is a, I'm just having a look, it's a broad nib. So the other one is a medium nib and this is a broad nib. But again, I, I like these pens, they hold a huge amount of ink capacity. So. If you're working in an office, say, and you don't want to ink up your pen every single day and you're doing a lot of writing, then having a vac filling pen pretty much uh, guarantees you around at least one and a half, if not to two and a half milliliters of ink. So uh, this means that you, if you're doing a lot of writing and maybe you're not changing inks, then uh, and you don't want to change inks, you just want a pen inked up to write with then maybe you have three or four of these. <laughs> Who knows, I've got five. Um, if if you are writing a lot, then sometimes it's a little bit of a savior not to have to keep re-inking pens. I know some people like to change inks. Uh, I personally would just ink up another pen, but that's uh, just, just me, I guess. Uh, the next pen I have inked up this week is the Pelican M805, not 800, 805. 805 uh, denotes the silver or rhodium colored trim, and 800 uh, denotes a gold colored trim. So this is the M805, and this is a vibrant blue. It's a pelican. Uh, this is a beautiful blue cracked ice effect going on. Uh, I love the color of this pen. I love that it's got the rhodium colored trims and nib. It's an 18 karat gold, and it's a broad nib. Um, I like these pens. They are slightly more narrower than I would like, but um, I do like the Pelican M800s uh, or 800 range. Uh, I I do find, though, I prefer the Visconti Homo Sapiens. They're just slightly more wider, but similar size. But I, I have a bunch of uh, Pelican M800 series pens, so I have that one inked up with me this week. I then have this one inked up, and this is the Visconti Daedalus, and you'll see it here. If I show you the cap band, it says Daedalus. And you also will notice that there's a Minotaur head there. 
So this is the Daedalus. Uh, it's, all of these silver uh, overlays are basically mazes. Uh, this really is a beautiful pen. It also, if you look at the blue resin material, certainly here in the body, you may see that that sparkles a little bit because it does have uh, silver dust. I believe it's silver dust uh, impregnated into that body. Uh, it's a semi sort of translucent demonstrator as well. Um, it's got a double reservoir here, which is locked off at the moment. Um, and um, it's a Paravac filler. Uh, you'll see that it's got a 23 cap palladium medium nib there. Um, I like the size of this pen. I find the section just right. It's slightly more girthier than the Pelican M800 series. Uh, and I find that this pen uh, is really good in the size of my hand. So uh, I love writing with that pen. And I have that one inked up this week. Another pen I have inked up. And I had this inked up on a previous week. This is the Visconti Camelot. Um, this is a really, really beautiful pen. Uh, this is chainmail, and you could just see how exquisite that chainmail is. And then you've got the herringbone effect going on there between each layer. It's really beautiful. It's got these lovely gold uh, trims here. Are both you've got a cap band and a body band. Uh, it also comes with a sword clip as well. Not that functional, but uh, I like it. It's a Pavac. It's a single reservoir. Uh, this one sports an 18 cat gold uh, old style Visconti nib. It's a medium nib that has a bit of a bounce to it. And I really love how this one writes. So uh, I have that one inked up with me uh, this week as well. And then we have an Atelier Lusso Andromeda. And I have painting I've ridden with the Andromedas for a little while now. So this is uh, the Tectonic Seas. This was a, a pen that I had commissioned from Eric at Atelier Lusso in California. And uh, this was one of his uh, earlier models. And you can see it's got the old El for Lusso. Uh, he now has a dragon instead. Um, I wanted a sort of topographical look at the earth with sort of seas and cloud and some land. And I thought this material would actually work really well, and I'm glad I picked it because uh, I asked uh, Eric to make a pen out of this material, and it is beautiful. So I really do like this. You can see here this lovely sort of blue sea and cloud effects with some land. It's it's just a stunning pen. So uh, if I unscrew the cap, you'll see it's got a uh, number six size Yovo broad nib. It's a steel nib. It's a cartridge converter pen, but I like it. Uh, it does have a bit of a step down. I know that's not for everybody, and you can't post a cap, which on this model, you're not. it's not designed to do so. But I like it. I, I do like this pen. So uh, I have this one inked up with me this week as well. The next pen I have inked up, and this has been inked up for a number of weeks, and I do love this pen. It's... it's uh, a pen made by Sean at the London Pen Company in uh, in Canada and uh, in Ontario. So this is a beautiful pen. It's using the material from Jonathan Brooks, the primary manipulation, and this is PM1. And this is uh, one of the larger models that Sean is now making. This is a Christopher 15. So it is a girthy pen. But if you look at this material, this this is a beautiful um, hand poured resin that Jonathan Brooks makes. Now each one of these is unique and different. So uh, if you just ask a pen maker or pen turner for a primary manipulation, you may get one with more reds or more greens or more whites or more browns. So uh, I would suggest if you want one, then I would certainly go and uh, ask um, for one to be made first. Uh, I know Sean has a lot of these that he makes and puts into stock. So you can go to his website and just choose one that is in stock if you like the pattern and colors. Uh, so this is a girthy pen, uh, but I like girthy pens. Um, so it comes with a number six size uh, Bok nib. It's a broad nib, uh, still nib, but this uh, 
it's a cartridge converter pen. I like it. I like it a lot. This really, really um, works well for me. So uh, I, I love the size of this pen. Um, you can post the cap if you want to as well. And it does post fairly deeply and quite securely. So uh, if I really push it on there, it will post nicely. Uh, I don't post my caps. It's just something that I don't do normally. So, uh, But you can if you want to which is a good thing. So uh, this is a beautiful pen and uh, I have been loving writing with this. So Sean sent this in for review. Uh, I have done a review of this pen and and I'm loving it. So, so I have this one inked up this week as well. The next pen is another Atelier Lusso Andromeda and this is the King Cobra. Again, it was another pen that I asked Eric Atelier Lusso to commission. Uh, this is a beautiful uh, gold and silver uh, sparkly pen. Uh, it's got a lot of chatoyants in it, and it's got this King Cobra on the cap. And when I asked Eric to make this one, you've got the Alpha Luso there as well, uh, I said that I, I would rather have the King Cobra on the cap and not the body. I think a lot of people would say that they like it on the body, but I really want it on the cap. So... Uh, Eric was able to do that, and uh, I love this pen. It's it's one of my favourite Telia Lusso pens for sure. Um, this comes with a number six size Yovo Steel broad nib, um, but this again, uh, you're not supposed to post these, not designed to do so. Uh, but I like it. I, I like this pen. It's a cartridge converter, and it really feels nice in my hand. There is a bit of a step down, so I know not everybody likes step downs, but uh, for me, that step down really doesn't bother me because the section is quite long. So for me, that's that's a nice pen. And I have that one inked up this week. The next pen here is the Pelican M800 Royal Gold Warden. And this is a limited edition. And you can see there the uh, artist's signature. These are Warden strips of gold. And these are... Uh, layered inside the barrel and inside the cap and lined up to be straight these and cut straight these are really really well done so it is essentially a maquille Warden uh, it's, it's definitely Warden it's abalone shell but it's it's essentially a maquille pen uh, it's a beautiful pen uh, it's pelican logo there um, gold trims and again I like this a lot so this comes with a two-tone Pelican M800 nib. It's an 18 cat gold nib. It's a broad nib there. Uh, and I love it. I love this pen. I love it a lot. So um, it's again, it's a pen that I haven't typically written with a lot lately. So I decided, I, I looked through my pen drawers and I thought, you know what? I need to start inking up some of these older pens again. Some of the pens I typically haven't inked up for a while. Um, you can post the cap on these pelicans, and they do post quite deeply and securely. Uh, as you may or may not know, I, I don't normally post my caps, but if I find a pen is a little bit on the short side, then I will. Uh, this does have a sort of translucent ink window here as well. Um, it's it's a it's a lovely pen, and uh, not a cheap pen, but it's a lovely pen, and it's a pen that I do like in my collection. And then we have this uh, honker of a pen. I say honker because it's a massive, massive pen. This is a Danny Trio, and it's got a very long name, a Kidami Bamboo Story. Um, this is uh, basically an ebonite pen, and it's layered with lots of layers of, of Yurushi uh, in Akatamanuri, and it's basically created into this sort of bamboo style sort of really shape of a pen uh, it looks like a bamboo cane the way that you have these ridges going on here so it is Yurushi it is um, Akitamanuri uh, you will see also the artist's signature there as well uh, it is actually a um, eyedropper pen and you have a shut off valve here that will allow you to basically um, uh, sort of allow more ink into the nib and, and uh, feed and make it a little bit more wetter. Uh, if I unscrew the cap, 
you'll see this beautiful two-tone Danny Trio nib. It's a Bok nib. Uh, this is a fine nib. Uh, it's an 18 karat gold nib, but this is absolutely stunning. So uh, for me, I, I love this pen. It was a pen that I picked up at the London Pen Show a number of years ago, and I was at the right place at the right time. And a lot of people ask me, you know, send me emails uh, or leave comments on YouTube or on um, Instagram, and they ask me, how do you pick up this pen or how do you pick up that pen? And honestly, a lot of it is uh, being lucky and being in the right place at the right time uh, or somebody knowing that you like a certain type of pen or a certain make of pen and somebody offering maybe you a pen for sale because they're trying to sell it out of their collection. Um, so a lot of this really is more by chance than anything. Um, and this one was. I was walking around the London Pen Show and I saw this pen and I was like, right, it's Yurushi. That ticks one box. It's a large pen. Ticks another box. It's got a beautiful nib on it. Ticks another box. Um, it's a girthy pen. Ticks another box. It's a bamboo sort of cane shaped pen. And that appealed to me. So that ticks another box. And at that point, it was just a matter of what is the price? What can I buy it for? That's coming into my collection. And I'm glad that I did. Um, but this is a eyedropper pen. So you unscrew the section here. I'm not going to do it. But you unscrew the section and then you eyedropper with ink. Uh, so uh, it, it, it's a different style filling system. But I love it. But just look at this Akatamanuri like finish. It's beautiful. So again, I'm glad that uh, not only do I have that in my collection, but I was able to ink that up this week as well. So I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So the first pen is a Twisby Rack 700R Iris. So we'll do an ink swatch. And you'll see here that this is a more narrower nib uh, it's a medium nib, still nib, but you'll see there it's it's also not a super wet nib either. But I think the ink also ha uh, plays a part in that in this particular ink. So we just finish this off. So this is a Twisby Vac 700R Iris, and it is a medium still nib. Uh, I typically prefer broad nibs in the Yo in the uh, either Yovo or in the Twisby nibs. Uh, so um, this is a medium nib. I I bought five of these these Twisby Vac seven hundred Rs, and uh, I think three are in broad and two in medium. So the ink in here is diamine, and it's violet. But that is a, a nice writing nib. Uh, I just typically prefer more broader nibs. The next one is, a, again, a Twisby Vac 700R Iris. But this is a broad nib. So you'll see the difference between the medium and the broad nib. And hopefully you can see there already it is almost, I'd say, double the width. So this is a Twisby Vac 700R Iris. Uh, this is a broad steel nib. Now, I would actually say that really that medium, to me, writes more like a Western Fine. Uh, the ink in here is a Diamine Mistletoe. And I know it's not that time of year, but it's a green ink that I do like. Uh, I think it's a little bit like Diamine Sherwood Green. And uh, I have actually got one of those pens inked up with Diamine Sherwood Green. So we'll see it on the same page. The next pen is the Pelican M800 or M805 Vibrant Blue. So we'll do an ink swatch here. 
Now, this is an ink that I like a lot. It's a blue ink, obviously, uh, to go with a blue pen. But it's an ink that I do like a lot. So uh, this is the Pelican M805. And this is uh, the Vibrant Blue. And it's a broad 18 cat gold nib from Pelican. And then the ink in here is Diamine Azza Blue. But that to me is a is a nice sort of mid to dark blue ink. The next pen is the Visconti Daedalus. So we'll do an ink swatch. So this, again, another blue ink, another blue pen. But I have to say I do like this. So this is the Visconti. And it's the Daedalus. And it is a medium. And it's a 23 cat palladium nib and then the ink in here is Visconti blue which for me is a, a lovely uh, blue ink. The next pen is the Visconti Camelot so we'll do an ink swatch and again like this I, I normally match ink colors to pen colors but this was, I think I started with Diamine Old Grey on this. And I just, I liked it, but I thought I would try something different. And I tried this ink, and then I really liked it, and I've stuck with it ever since. So this is the Visconti Camelot. And it is a medium, uh, I want to say 23, it's not, it's 18 carat, isn't it? So it is actually a... 18 cat gold nib. Sort that one out a little bit there. <laughs> um, the ink in here is uh, Mont Blanc. And it is lavender. Purple. Which is a lovely, lovely ink. The next pen is the Atelier Luso Andromeda in the Tectonic Seas. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, in a lot of cases, I do ink this up with a blue ink. And I decided this time I would ink it up with a green ink instead. Because um, there is green in the pen as well. So this is an Atelier Luso. Andromeda in the tectonic seas. Uh, it is a broad still Yovo nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine Sherwood Green. I did say that I would have uh, a pen inked up with Sherwood Green, so you can see the difference between Mistletoe and Sherwood Green. And in my mind, they are actually both very, very similar colour inks. On paper, not so much. <laughs> kind of strange, isn't it? How, how your mind kind of plays tricks on you. So Sherwood Green is actually a much darker green. Um, and I think, again, I'd like to say that Mont Blanc Irish Green is a darker green like Sherwood Green, but it may be somewhere between the two when it's on paper. But I don't have one of those inked up this week, unfortunately. The next pen is the London Pen Company Christopher 15 in Primary Manipulation 1. So we'll do an ink swatch. And again, another green. Uh, but this is 
quite a lighter green than the previous two greens. So this is the London Pen Company and it's the Christopher in the 15 in primary manipulation one and the ink in here of the the nib in here is a uh, broad and it's a bock steel nib and the ink in here is diamine meadow which is a lighter green but i i it's a green I, I i would say i prefer more than mistletoe and more than sherwood green the next pen is the atelier luso andromeda king cobra we'll do an ink swatch now this is a pen that i like but i also love this color ink uh, and i the reason why i here i kind of chuckle and sigh at the same time is a I bought three bottles of this ink and I don't write with it enough. Uh, it's a sheening ink. It's a fairly heavy sheening ink, but not anywhere like, say, Organic Studios Nitrogen, but it does sheen quite a bit. So this is the Atelier Luso Andromeda. Uh, it's the King Cobra. And it is a broad Yovo steel nib. Now, I know what you're saying. Yes, that ink does not match the color of that pen. And I know. And I wanted to put a gold ink in here or a silver ink. But I didn't find anything really. I didn't want something with um, shimmer particles. And I just couldn't find any ink that I wanted to put in here. So I put this in and I love it. And I have used it ever since. So... This the ink in here is uh, Diamine, and it's a German exclusive. It's Skull and Roses. But for me, that is a really, really uh, lovely uh, sheening ink. And when I say sheening, let me um just grab the bottle quickly, and I'll show you. This is what the rim, the threads of the bottle look like. So you can hopefully see that sheen going on there. So it's a, it's a good uh, sheening ink. The next pen inks up this week is the Pelican M800 Royal Gold Raden. So we'll do an ink swatch. And again, this is an ink. I wanted a goldish color ink. And I tried a bunch of different gold inks, and this one was the closest I could get to a gold ink without any shimmer particles. Uh, the reason why I didn't want shimmer, shimmer particles was that they tend to make a, a nib feel as though it's a lot drier because you're writing on that glitter, not just on ink. Uh, so um, this is a Pelican M800 Royal gold Raden. Uh, it is a broad steel nib and then the ink in here is uh, Pilot Iroshizuku and it's Inner Ho and then the final pen is the Danny Trio Bamboo Story. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now this is a fine nib. Um, and depending on whether or not I open up the uh, valve here at the end of the pen, it can either write dry or it can write like a fire hose. And there really isn't a lot of difference, sort of really a lot in between. So it's either dry or it's super wet. So this is the Danny Trio. And it's the Bamboo Story. And it's uh, in uh, Aka Tamanuri. And it's a fine, uh, it's an 18 cat gold nib. 
uh, and it's a bulk nib. And the ink in here is uh, Diamine Poppy Red, which is a, a beautiful bright red ink. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. So we have a Twisby Vac 700R Iris in a medium steel nib inked up with Diamine Violet. We have a Twisby Vac 700R Iris in a broad steel nib inked up with Diamine Mistletoe. We have a Pelican M805 Vibrant Blue in a broad 18 cat gold nib inked up with Diamine Azure Blue. We have a Visconti Daedalus in a medium 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Visconti blue. We have a Visconti Camelot in a medium 18 cap gold nib inked up with Mont Blanc lavender purple. We have an Atelier Lusso Andromeda in tectonic seas in a broad steel nib inked up with diamine Sherwood green. We have a London pen company Christopher 15 in the primary manipulation one in a broad steel nib inked up with diamine meadow. We have an Atelier Lusso Andromeda King Cobra in a broad steel nib inked up with diamine Skull and Roses. We have a Pelican M800 Royal Gold Warden in a broad steel nib inked up with Pilot Orochizuku in a hoe. And then last but not least, we have a Danny Trio Bamboo Story in Akatamanuri in a fine 18 karat gold nib inked up with diamine Poppy Red. So there you have it. That's my currently ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment and subscribe and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye bye.